Hello, welcome to High Ground Gaming. This is Eric. Tonight we're going to play another game for the 1978 Boston Red Sox season replay. They get um, a game with the Minnesota Twins. They're starting a new series here. I believe it's, I think it's a two game series. I'm not sure though. I think, I know there's a double header today, so it might be more than a two game series, but uh, um, two games today anyway. We'll play the first game of this now, of this, of the, um, Double header. Mr. Brody is in the house with, playing with his poodle right now, so I'm sure he'll uh, he'll quiet down there and get back into his co-host seat. Miss Mag said it's Brody's turn. He didn't she didn't want to co-host tonight, but she may make a presence later on. We'll see. So here we go. So we have Tom Bergmeier getting a start. Which could be an adventure. A spot starter, mostly reliever, but a spot starter, lefty specialist. Against, I think it's Darren Jackson there. I want to call him Darren Jackson. So let's find out. Get the game underway. Welcome, Welcome to the stadium, the stadium for today's, today's ball game. game. Alrighty, so game one of a doubleheader. As you can see, it's not Metropolitan Stadium. Uh, if you've seen this series before, you noticed a lot of the um, team stadiums don't load for some reason. Um, I've tried reloading it and everything, but it seems to always... Yeah, I guess Yankee Stadium is the default, I've heard, I've been told. Um, but no worries, I don't really worry about stuff like that. If it loads, it loads. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, I find myself, I get immersed so much into the game that I don't even realize what stadium it's playing at. It does give, it does play the right dimensions. So this is purely just a cosmetic thing. So it doesn't affect the game at all. Um, unless you're a Red Sox fan. And then having to look at Yankee Stadium all the time is kind of depressing. But it, Metropolitan Stadium, it does say it is a bad day here. So it's definitely a bad, any, any day is a bad day when you have Yankee Stadium as a backdrop. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so it is Daryl Jackson, not Darren Jackson. So Daryl Jackson's going for the Twins. He's got a record of two and two with a four point four three ERA. He's pitched forty three innings, allowed seventy thirty seven hits. Uh, if he gave if he gave up seventy three hits in forty three innings, that would be more like uh, Alan Ripley territory. Um, twenty one walks and twenty three strikeouts, and has surrendered six home runs. In actuality, he was had a four and six record with a four point five zero ERA, so ERA wise, pretty close to his actual ERA. So for the visiting Boston Red Sox, Jerry Remy will lead it off and play second, followed by Fred Lynn, the center fielder. Fred Lynn's getting a few starts, um, batting second recently. Jim Rice, the DH, bats third. Kai Shremsky is in the left field, batting. Cleanup, which is where we want to see Yaz play because he has a one range in, in left field. And Jim Rice has only a three range. So batting fifth is the first baseman, George Scott. Batting sixth, all the way up at sixth, no Carlton Fist today. As Bob Montgomery gets started, but batting sixth is Butch Hobson, the third baseman. Dwight Evans, the right fielder, bats seventh. Bob Montgomery behind the plate, bats eighth. And the shortstop, Rick Burleson, who's been pretty much playing shortstop for the last close to month um, 
It's got to be close to a month now since uh, Rick Burleson's been out. So Jerry Remy comes in hitting 304 with two homers and 34, 31 runs batted in. Jackson looks into the sign from Borgman. Here's the windup in the pitch. And it's going to be a base hit, so a good start for the Red Sox as Remy gets on with a leadoff single. So in the outfield for the Twins, behind Jackson is Norwood, Ford, and Rivera. Ford has the most range with a two, uh, both above average range, where Norwood and Rivera um, are below average range. So Ford has to cover a lot of territory out there to make up for them. Um, Rivera has the best arm, above average arm. Norwood has a below average arm, and Ford has an average arm. In the infield, it's Wolf, Smalley, Randall, and Kusick. Um, Wolf and has below average range, will commit a good amount of errors. Smalley, same thing, except for the average range. Randall, above average range, and has similar rating um, to Remy. Actually, probably a little bit better. Maybe about the same as Remy does at second. Um, Kusick, below average range, and will commit a few errors. Borgman behind the plate has below average range. Very short-handed and has an, a below average arm. So we may see if we can test that out today. As Jackson on the mound has a plus three hole rating. So any stolen base attempts will get a plus four adjustment based upon Jackson's hole rating and Bar Borgman's arm. So it's a good day to run today if we can get runners on that have a little bit of speed. So we're definitely going to try that if we can. Situation calls for it. Or if we just feel like it. Uh, on the mound, Jackson, very error prone. Um, average range. So the corners are playing in for Freddie Lynn. So I think we're going to actually try to steal here. See if we can get a jump. So 1 to 19 chance. you got to go with those odds. Quick move to first by Jackson and gets him back. Wow. All right, so now it's probably going to give me like a real low range now. Actually, we won't try it. We'll just call it off. And Lynn strikes out looking right down the middle. Froze him on that one. All right, so let's see if we can uh, try stolen base again. Well, now it's only a 1 to 13 chance. So I don't like that. I'm not going to go with that. So. So Rice comes in hitting 318 with 28 home runs. Hit his, I believe he hit his 28th home run yesterday. And 82 runs batted in. against. I think it was against the Royals, I want to say. It's definitely over the weekend, I know that. So let's see what he can do here. It's off of his three column. And that's going to be a strikeout on a big slow curve. It's a back-to-back -back case for Jackson. Let's see if we can get a jump again. Again, I don't like that. I think they should adjust it. It's just always a 1 to 13 now after, you, after you've tried it during the inning there. So I wish they would change that depending upon who's up and situation and all that stuff. But All right. So your strength gap now, 288. Hit it with 10 homers and 45 runs batted in. Here's the pitch by Jackson. It's off of his sixth column. And your strength scale... Get himself a single off the middle. Remy will move over to third. To run is at the corners with two down. For George Scott, George Scott hitting 243 with seven homers and 27 runs batted in. So Boomer with a chance here. He's got his calm. Can he get his roll? And he cannot. He strikes out swinging. He went for it and came up empty. So after one half, it's Boston nothing and Minnesota coming up. Tom, Bar Tom Bergmeier used to pitch for the um, Minnesota Twins. Either that or he pitched for them afterward. I can't remember which. Um, I think it was before, though. Could be possibly before and after. We'll have to look into that. See if we can get back to you on that. And Mr. Brody just checked on it. It was actually before um, he pitched for the Red Sox from 1970 
four to seventy seven he pitched for the Minnesota Twins. So thank you, Mr. Brody, with that stat. And he did pitch for the Red Sox for four years from eighty seventy eight to eighty two. Eighty two being his best year when he went seven and zero with a two point two nine ERA in forty games, pitching a hundred and two innings out of the pen. Fat 1978 was his worst year with the Red Sox. So, so Tom Bergmeier's stats coming into the game, 1-1 one and one record with a 5.29 ERA. This is one of his rare starts on the season. Oh, there's Miss Mags. She's come to join us. Um, 34 innings pitch, 43 hits allowed. 12 walks and 22 strikeouts and has surrendered 5 homers. So the lineup for the visiting Twins is as follows. Willie Norwood, the left fielder, bats first. Bombo Rivera, the right fielder, bats second. The center fielder, Dan Ford, will bat third. Batting cleanup is Jose Mor Morales. Is it Jose Morales or Jerry Morales? I always get them mixed up. Jose Morales, we were right. That's cleanup. Craig Cusack, the first baseman, bats fifth. Roy Smalley, the shortstop, sixth. Larry Wolf at third base, bats third. The second baseman, Bob Randall, bats eighth. And behind the plate... It's Greg Borgman. Glenn Borgman will bat ninth. So, or Norwood comes in hitting 222 on the season with four homers and 32 runs batted in. So, hitting about 33 points behind his average for the season. But he'll start off the inning with a triple as he hits it between Lynn and Yastrzemski all the way to the wall. So Bergmar already in trouble with the first batter of the, after the first batter of the game. So Bombo Rivera up now. Bombo hit 271, which is exactly what he hit for the season. He's hitting 271 now with a homer and 12 runs batted in. RBI opportunity here. And that's where the, you want to be if you're a Red Sox fan on Bergmar's sixth column. And that's going to be a ground ball to Scott. That'll get the run home. So an RBI ground out by Rivera puts the Twins on board. one nothing. So to bring up Dan Ford. Dan Ford hitting 284 in the season with eight homers and 41 runs batted in. And it's going to be at Bergmeier's four column. And that's going to be a range check on Frank Duffy, which is not what you want to do if you're a Red Sox fan. Duffy or Hobson. Duffy might be actually worse than Hobson. He gets in front of it, but is he able to handle it? That's the question. And he is not. <laughs> More often than not, he will not handle it. So he boots it, and he cannot make the throw. That's going to be an error on Duffy. So Ford will reach. So to bring up Jose Morales. Jose Morales having a great season so far, hitting 368 with two homers and 19 runs batted in. 314 for the actual year. And this could be two. Duffy over to Remy for one, back to first. And they turn two. To end the inning. So Bergmeier gets out of it just minimal damage. So we'll head to the second with the Twins up 1-0. It'll be Hobson, Evans, and Montgomery up against Jackson. Hobson hitting 285 on the season with 9 homers and 34 runs batted in. It's going to be a range check on Randall. He's a 2 range. So he'll get in front of it. And he'll make the play over to Kusick for out number one. So Hobson's retired. So let's look at some scores from around the league. California on top of Cleveland, two to nothing. Detroit edging Minnesota, Oakland, two to one. Seattle shutting out Toronto, four nothing. In the battle of the expansion teams, Milwaukee and Chicago are scoreless. Yankees are edging Kansas City 2-1. It's not what we want to see there. And Texas edging Baltimore 1-0. So Evans up now with one down. Hitting 277 with 16 homers and 58 runs batted in. And this can be a range check on Borgman. Oh. 
Oh, and this is going to be an error on board. When you get gotcha. not often you see an error on this range check, but there is one here. And he does not commit that many errors, so that's surprising to see that many errors ratings on the X chart here. Hmm, interesting. And he drops the ball as he tries to make the catch. So, so Evans has new life. Error on a foul pop-up. I haven't seen that before there. It's something new. And he'll end up drawing the walk. So a one-out walk puts Evans on. So that'll bring up Monty, Bob Montgomery. Montgomery off to an unusually fast start. He only had 29 at-bats on the entire season, has 23 already, and is hitting 391. So definitely, oh, Miss Maggs is going to be the co-host there. So she's got her mouse there, I think. Oh, no, she's doing her kneading thing, getting the, getting ready for the game. She's doing her exercises, getting ready for the game. Here she comes. <laughs> yeah, so Montgomery again, having an unusually good season. Hitting 391 with nine runs batted in. Two triples already and a double. So Montgomery, unbelievable. <laughs> Definitely uh, not. But again, that's in limited amount of at-bats. So there's a lot of standard deviation. As you can use the statistics terms in variance. Um, just because of the low sample size, the low, low at-bats and everything there. So see what Montgomery can do here, see if he can continue his hot hitting. And it's going to be off the four column of Jackson. And he will not, as it's going to be a range check on Smalley. He's a three range, so one to four will be a base hit. Gets in front of it. Oh, I was hoping that was an error. Almost landed on that error. Is he going to turn two? Might not be hit hard enough. Nope. So Smalley handles it and just retires Montgomery. So Montgomery out on the field is choice. Evans moves up to second. So that brings up Frank Duffy hitting 271 with 13 runs batted in. And Duffy's going to get a good one to hit here. And he'll lay off of it as it's inside for ball four. So it tails inside. So runners on first and second with two down for Remy. He singled his first time up. Can he single again? No, he'll pop it up to Smalley, and that'll do it for the Red Sox. The Red Sox unable to score. After one and a half, trail at one nothing. Bergmeier up on the hill. Back on the hill. Cusick up now. Cusick hitting 200 on the season with a homer and 12 runs bet in. And he's going to draw a walk. This Bergmeier is not happy with that. So the corners are going to play in, expecting Smalley to bunt. Scott hold, Scott not holding on. And let's see what happened here. Number to first. Scott trots to the bag. So, so Kusek moves in the scoring position with one down. So just as effective as a bunt to, on the hit and run there. So Larry Wolf up now. Larry Wolf hitting 2 9 Four in the season with three homers and 26 runs bad in. Only hit three on the actual season, so he's already reached that mark in 100 less at-bats, approximately. Oh, but he's going to get one to hit off Bergmari here. And he is not going to miss this one as it goes all the way to the wall. Cusack will coast in. And Wolf has himself an RBI double. So 2 nothing Minnesota. Bergmeier did not last five innings in this in this game, actual game. And it doesn't look like he's going to do that today as Randall's going to get a good one to hit here. Randall comes in hitting 279 with 21 runs batted in. And he'll get his 22nd RBI as he hits one over the head of Lynn all the way to the wall. And Wolf comes around. So the Twins now lead at 3 to nothing. On the RBI double by Randall. As Lynn dove for it and missed it. So Borgman up now. Off his one column. And that'll be a strikeout swinging. So Bergmar gets his first, second strikeout of the day. No, actually first strikeout of the day. So that brings up Norwood. Top of the order. He tripled his first time up. 
came in the score. And he's going to hit with the Duffy. Looks the runner back over to first. No, she doesn't have to look the runner back as there were two outs. <laughs> so it's 3 nothing Twins as they put a two spot up. So Fred Lynn up now. Fred Lynn struck out his first time up. And this time he'll fly out to his counterpart in center, Ford. He's under it and makes the grab for out number one. So Jim Rice up now, 0 for 1, struck out his first time up. And he's going to hit a grounder back to Jackson. Grabs it over to Cusick. Score that a 1-3, so two quick outs in the Red Sox th third inning. Brings up Yastrzemski, who singled his first time up. And he'll strike out looking. So after two and a half, it's Minnesota three and Boston nothing. Bergmeier with the RBI ground out his first time up. This time he draws a walk. As Monty goes up and talks to him. He's back behind the plate. Brings up Dan Ford as Rivera gets a walking lead. And he's going to try to steal. And we're going to have Monty throw for him. And oh no, this could be an error. As Monty airmails it. <laughs> Should have known better with Monty catching. And Rivera moved to third with nobody out. So I'll credit Rivera with a stolen base moving to third on the error by Montgomery. Red Sox already with two errors on the day. One by Duffy and now one by Montgomery. And he'll line one out to Hobson. Rivera has to hold. One down. So Morales up now. Ground into a double play his first time up. And that'll score the run as it's a base hit. Baltimore chop. Past the infield into left for a single. So it's 4 nothing now as Minnesota has scored in every inning so far. Craig Cusack walked his first time up. And this time he'll strike out looking. So two down now. Scott holding on Morales. Smalley up now. Grounded out his first time up. Oh my goodness. And the Twins get their fifth hit as Morales moves into scoring position. Wolf had an RBI double his first time, and this should get Bergmeier out of the inning, depending upon if it's a range check or not. And it's not. He jumps, he's under it, and makes the catch to retire the side. Or the Twins tack on another run, and it's 4 nothing after 3. So to bring up Scott, he struck out his first time up. And this time he'll draw the walk. So lead off walk for Scott. Hobson grounded out his first time up. And this time he'll fly out to Rivera and right for the first out of the fourth. Scores again. California and Cleveland tied at two. Detroit edging Oakland three to two. Seattle still shutting out Toronto four nothing. Yankees and Royals are tied at two. Baltimore le Texas leads Baltimore one nothing. And Evans walked his first time up. I mean, walked uh, his second time up. He reached on an error his first time up. Actually, that was only one at bat. That error on the foul pop up. So they just did that for. A Bookkeeping purposes, as it does not account as an official at bat, since it was a foul ball. So Evans did walk his first time up. So this will be a fly ball to Rivera in right. He's a four range, so one to eleven will be a hit, and it's going to be a double. So Rivera, very limited range out there, goes all the way into the corner, and. Scott will score from first. So the Boomer showing his wheels there as that was hitting to the corners. Scores all the way from first to put the Red Sox on the board. So an RBI double for Evans. 
So Montgomery up now. He grounded out his first time up. And look at all those strikeouts. In fact, look at those strikeouts in that second and third column. So he's definitely been rolling a lot off of a pitcher's card, as you can tell. Because he is absolutely awful. Awful for strikeouts. In fact, he struck out 54 times. Wait, hold on. Sorry. He struck out 12 times and only 29 at bats. <laughs> so that is pretty bad. Yeah, that is over a 33% strikeout rate. It's like a 40% strikeout rate. Awful. And there it is. So I would not be surprised if he strikes out his next four at bats to bring that average down into the reasonable range. So Frank Duffy with an RBI opportunity here. He walked his first time up. And he cannot come through as he lines out to Cusick to end the inning. But the Red Sox get on the board on the RBI double by Evans. So it's four to one now. Let's see if Bergmar can have a shutdown inning here. Give the Red Sox a chance to catch up. Randall had an RBI double his first time up. And he's going to ground out to Remy. So hopefully he'll pass his range check here. Gets in front of it. And he'll make the play over to Scott for out number one. Borgman up now. Borgman struck out his first time up. This time he'll fly out to his trump skin left. For out number two. So Norwood one for two, tripled in the first and grounded out in the second. And Bergmeier has himself a 1-2-3 inning as he grounds out, as Norwood grounds out to Remy. So a nice clean inning by Bergmeier. First 1-2-3, his first 1-2-3 inning. So that'll be at the top of the order for the Red Sox in the fifth. Trailing by three. Remy one for two. And Remy's got to get a good one to hit here. However, he's going to beat it into the ground. And Smalley gets in front of it. And makes the play over to Kusick for out number one. So Fred Lynn up now. 0 for 2 on the day. And Lynn's going to give this one a ride. Could it go? Could it go? No. It's going to be caught by Rivera at the wall. So that looked like it was going to go, but... The wind pushed it back in. So Rice up now, 0 for 2 on the day. And he's going to hit one between Ford and Nord all the way to the wall. So he'll heal himself a two out double. See, so Shremsky 1 for 2 on the day. Gets a good one to hit here. Let's see what he can do with it. And Shremsky delivers with a base hit to right. And we're going to send the lead runner. And they're going to cut it off, allowing the run to come in. See, so Jastrzemski with an RBI single. Cuts the twin lead to two now. So Scott up now. 0 for 1. Also walked. And Scott's going to get a good one to hit here. And he's going to give this one a ride. But this one is going to stay in the park as Norwood... Catches it on the warning track at the wall. So the Red Sox continue to chip away to score another run. And it's now 4-2 to two halfway through. Bregmeier had his first 1-2-3 inning last inning. See what he can do here. Rivera 0-1 for 1 with an RBI. Doesn't look like it's going to happen here. And it will not, as this one, Lynn is not going to be able to get to that one. And he's going to try for three. Nope, he decides to hold it second. So Rivera on with a leadoff double. Dan Ford up now, 0 for 2 on the day, reached on an error back in the first by Bergmeier. I mean by uh, Duffy. 
Gets his revenge here, though. Gets his first hit of the day. And Rivera comes in to score, so... Twins get one of those runs back as it's now 5-2. to two. Action in the Red Sox pen. See who they got going up now. They have... Dick Drago starts to loosen up. Jose Morales up now. He is one for two with an RBI. They make that two for two as he hits one on the left, and they're going to hold Ford at third. So Zimmer comes to the mound. That's going to be it for Bergmeier as he lasts four plus innings. And it looks like Dick Drago is going to come in to pitch. So Drago comes in. Drago actually pitched three and a third innings in this game. So you can go for a little while. So Cusick coming up now. 0 for 1 with a run scored. Runners at the corners. Still nobody out. Infield playing in. Ground ball to Remy. Over to first. As that was hit too slow as Ford comes in. No, Ford decides to hold that third as Remy was able to bluff him back. And they get the out. So run is on second and third. Infield still playing in for Smalley. And the Red Sox are going to put... Intentionally walk Smalley. Smalley is hitting 316 with 14 homers on the season. So we're going to intentionally walk him. Definitely rather pitch to Wolf. And force at any base now. So Wolf one for two on the day with a double. Wolf is hitting 297 on the season, but with only three homers. And actually only a 234 hitter on the actual season. So, And this looks like it's going to be a good play here. A good choice as good move as Wolf pops up to Hobson for out number two. So, infield to play back now with two down. Bob Randall, one for two with, with an RBI double. Ah, oh, good. Looked like it was going to be a hit there, but the split hole roll is high. And that is it for Minnesota in the fifth as they were able to get just the one run as Drago comes in and shuts the door. So, after five full, it's Minnesota five and Boston two. Sox have Hobson, Evans, and Montgomery. If anybody gets on, Duffy. And Evans strikes out looking. I mean, Hobson does. So 6K of the day for Jackson. That brings it up Evans. Evans one for one. Doubled in the fourth and walked in the second. Has an RBI too. And that's a line out to Smalley. So two outs in the Red Sox. Sixth. Brings up Montgomery. 0 for 2 on the day. He's going to get a good one to hit here. And he's going to hit a double down the line. So Bob Montgomery with an extra base hit. So Duffy with an RBI opportunity here. He's 0 for 1 with a walk. And Duffy cannot deliver as he strikes out to end the inning. So after five and a half, it's Minnesota five and Boston two. Glenn Borgman comes to the plate now. Borgman 0 for 2 on the day. And he strikes out swinging. So Drago with his first K of the day. On his second inning of, re of relief. Brings up Norwood. Norwood tripled in the first. One for three. And he strikes out looking here. So Drago with back-to-back -back strikeouts to open up the sixth. Brings up Rivera who's one for two of the double. In an RBI. 
And he strikes out the side. So Bregmeyer, I mean, uh, Drago comes in with a strong inning and strikes out the side. He's pumped up. Hopefully this will motivate the Red Sox to score some runs. Top of the order, Remy. One for three on the day. And that's going to be a base hit to right. So a good start to the seventh inning for the Red Sox. Brings up Fred Lynn. for three on the day. Lynn not the best against the lefties. And he'll pop it up to Wolf for out number one. So Jim Rice doubled his last time up, one for three. And he's going to single this time to the left. Hmm. Remy is going to take a shot here. 75% uh, chance we can't do that. Not down by three with Yastrzemski coming up. So one down now for Yastrzemski. He's having a good day. Two for three with an RBI. And that's going to be it for Jackson. And Jeff Hawley is going to come in now. Jeff Hawley has no record with one save. 4.91 ERA. Four innings pitch, four hits allowed. And has walked a batter. Here's the pitch to Yastrzemski. And Yastrzemski is going to get a fairly good pitch to see what he can do with it. And Yastrzemski delivers with a single to right. Wolf comes, I mean, uh, Remy comes in to score easily. Actually, no, he doesn't. 75% chance. I think they're going to cut it off again, so I'm going to send him. And hold him. No, they're going to go for it. So Remy scores. So they threw home. Rice Holt holds at second. The Red Sox a little bit closer now. Now 5-3 to th three now. So the tying run is out on base. For the boomer George Scott. 0 for 2 of the run scored. And Scott will get a decent call to hit off of here. Colley, good chance of getting a walk. And he does. He draws the walk. Lays off of it. Low and away. So it's going to load the bases for Butch Hobson. Hobson 0 for 3 on the day as Holly goes out to talk. Borgman goes out to talk to Holly. Smalley and Randall join in the conversation. Go back to their positions. Holly looks in for the sign, toes the rubber. Here's the wind up in the pitch. And Hobson's going to get under this one, pops it out to Cusick. As the infield fly rule is called. So two gone now for Dwight Evans. See if Ed Evans can continue the inning and get at least one run home. Evans one for two of the double. Come on, number six. Ah! He grounds out the Smalley to end the inning. The Sox do get another run, and it's within two now. Seventh inning stretch time. Brought to you by Mr. Brody and Miss Mags. So which of these players holds the National League record for the most lifetime games played at second base? So all the answers are here. We just have to figure out which one it is. Billy Herman, Rogers Hornsby, Joe Morgan. Oh boy, this is the one Al has trouble pronouncing, and I do too. Red Sh Schoendeist. Schoendeist. Bill Mazeroski or Frankie Frisch. So we've got a two, three, four, five. We get a fifteen or well, sixteen percent chance here. Sixteen to seventeen percent chance. I'm just gonna go with Frankie Frisch. So we'll see. I think I I, did, I played Frankie Frisch in a game recently. So I'm gonna go with Frankie Frisch. So lock in your answers. Who? Which of these players holds the National League record for the most lifetime games played at second base? Here's the answer. Joe Morgan. Joe Morgan was the answer to the trivia question. 
brought to you by Mr. Brody and Miss Mags. Thank you for that question. So Dan Ford will lead it off for the Twins in the home half of the seventh. Drago struck out the side his last inning of work. Ford one for three with a double. And this time he'll fly out to Yastrzemski for out number one. So Drago has retired all the batters he has faced. Oh, except for one. Reached on a walk. And that was it, but that was an intentional walk. So I don't really count that. Jose Morales, two for three with an RBI. And he grounds out to Duffy. Brings up Cusick. Cusick's going to get a good one to hit here. But he'll fly out to Evans in right. And one, two, three, go the Twins in the seventh. So Drago, pitching three fine innings out of the bullpen, is holding the holds the Twins scoreless once again. And it's still a two-run game. So Bob Montgomery doubled his last time up, one for three. Average now up to 385. As this is probably his last game of the season, as he only had 29 at-bats. He may get a pinch hit here and there, but I believe this will be the last his last start. At least it should be based upon those at-bats. And he draws a walk, so Montgomery makes the most of his playing time. Second time on the base on base today. So lead off runner is on for the Red Sox. And let's see if Fisk is available. We'll bring in a pinch runner. For Montgomery. So I think we're going to bring in. Yeah, Fisk is available, but kind of want to give him the day off because he's probably going to play the second game of the doubleheader. So maybe I'll bring in Gary, Gary Hancock, run it all. Hey, he's a 1 to 14. We'll bring in Gary Hancock to run. I'm probably not going to bring him in for much, but we'll bring him in for, for a pinch running for Montgomery. All right, so Gary Hancock comes in to pinch run for Monty. A lot better speed there with a 14. Could possibly score on a ball hit to the gap. Duffy up now. 0 for 2 with a walk, and it looks like they're going to change the pitcher. So, John Sutton comes in. Sutton with no decisions on the season with 3.86 ERA. has pitched five innings. Allowed five hits and struck out a batter. Let's see what Duffy can do against Sutton. And he's going to get a base hit as it falls in just in front of Ford. Hancock holds it second. So, runners on first and second. Corners playing in for Remy. Remy two for four on the day. Also scored a run. And he's going to fly out to Rivera and right for out number one. As he gets under that pitch. So, all right, so Fred Lynn up now. Happy to see a righty in there. 0 for four on the day. But results are still the same as he flies out to Norwood and left. So two down now. So Jim Rice, he could put the Red Sox ahead with the one swing of the bat. He's two for four with a double. See if he can do anything here. Oh, just barely out of the range. He needed a one to 14 and he gets a 15. So that's it. So Jim Rice unable to get the runner in. So we're going to bring in, since Remy, I mean, since uh, Fisk is catching in the second game, we're going to bring in, as much as we don't really want to, we're going to bring in Fred Kendall to catch. He's awful behind the plate, but we're going to bring him in anyway. So Fred Kendall comes in. He's a four range. Very error prone and a horrible arm, so hopefully they won't be, they won't get any runners on. So we don't have to find out that in action. 
but <laughs> as soon as I say that, Smalley's going to get a good pitch date here. He's one for two with a walk. Intentional walk. And he will get on. Not much of a threat to steal here, though. Scott will hold him on. Corner's playing in. Expecting the bunt. So Larry Wolf, one for three with a double. RBI double. And it's going to be a... Files off the button attempt, so it's now one and two. Let's see if they keep it on. They do not. And he's going to ground run out to Scott. Range check on Scott. Gets in front of it. And let's see what he's going to do with it. Ground it in the hole. Throws to second, and they get the lead runner. And Oh, they get the double play. So it's standing play by Scott as he's able to turn the 3-6-3, three, 3-6-1 six, three, three, six, double play. Bur Drago comes over to cover. And it's two outs now. So a great double play started by the Boomer. Brings up Bob Randall, who's one for three of the double. And he strikes out looking to end the inning. So Drago, with four fine innings out of the pen, keeps gives the Red Sox a chance here as we head to the top of the ninth. They're down by two. Sutton out to try to close it out here. Yastrzemski having a great day. Three singles and four at-bats. Two runs batted in. See if he can continue. And it does not look like it unless he gets a 12. Yeah, so that'd be a ground out to Randall. So one gone in the Red Sox ninth. You can look at the scores if you like. We're just going to look at two of them. So it looks like uh, the Yankees won 4-3 to three over Kansas City. And, hey, the White Sox lost, though. So if the Red Sox can come from behind here and get a victory, they can gain a gain on the Brewers. Game on the Brewers. So George Scott, you made an excellent defensive play in the last inning. Is 0-2 with the run scored. And he gets a base hit up the middle. So the Boomer on with the leadoff single. And we're going to pinch run for Scott. I think we're going to bring in Burrow here. He's the only one that really any speed. Uh, is it much of an improvement though? 11 or 12? And who can we bring in to play first? Can Brohammer play first? He cannot. We could bring in, we could, if we have to worry about it, we could put Fred Kendall at first and have Fisk come in the catch. If necessary, Bailey. He does not play first. Bob Bailey seems like a third, a first baseman, but he cannot play first. How about Bowen? Bowen cannot. Fisk played left field. I've never seen him play left field. <laughs> so we are gonna. Or we might, I don't think Bowen's any good either. He's a twelve. Could we could bring in Sam Bowen a pinch run instead of wasting Brohammer. We might need to bring in Brohammer to replace uh, Hobson defensively. So let's bring in Sam Bowen to run for Scott. You never know when he might need that extra little push. All right, so Butch Hobson up now with one down. Hobson hitless on the day, 0 for 4. And John Sutton's coming out, and Mike Marshall's coming in, the closer. So Marshall comes in with a 5-5 five and five record, 7 saves, 2.21 ERA, 57 innings pitched, 47 hits allowed, 26 walks and 39 strikeouts, and has surrendered a home run. It'd be nice if he surrendered his second home run here. But it does not look like it's going to happen. It is a range check on Wolf, and Wolf is not a very good defensive does not have much range, so one to six will be a base hit. Come on, one to six. Yes, it's a six, so it's going to be at least a base hit. Possibly an error. No, no error, but it's definitely going to be a base hit. And picked up by Wolf and fires to first, and nope. So runners on first and second. As the tying run is on first for Dwight Evans. He's one for three of the double. He's knocked in a run. 
as Borgman goes out to talk to Marshall. Oh, this could be good. And it is. It's going to be a base hit to right. So Evans with the base hit. Bowen's coming around the score. Rivera throws to third. Won't be in time as Hobson slides in safely. So the tying run just 90 feet away. Oh, we, can't hit, we can't let Fred Kendall hit here. Do we bring in Fisk here? I think we do. For a pinch hit. Game's on the line here. Fisk is definitely our best hitter off the bench here by far. So we're going to bring in Fisk. If the game is to continue, he's going to have to come in and catch anyway. So, well, he doesn't have to, but we definitely don't want Fred Kendall hitting in this pressure situation. So, Fisk will come in and pinch hit. So, all right. So, Carlin Fisk comes in. Fisk having a fine season. 314 average, 13 homers, and 53 runs batted in. Tying run just 90 feet away. Corners playing in. Here we go. Uh, not good there. Come on. Come on, either low or high. Nice fly ball would be good, too. That's going to be a ground ball to Smalley. Throws a second horn back to first. Oh, and they turn two to end the game. So Fisk grounds into the double play to end the game. Unbelievable. So the Red Sox fall by one. Oh, Fisk is disgusted. <laughs> and I cannot blame him. So the Red Sox fall just short in the first game of the doubleheader, five to four. And there's Mr. Brody. So let's get the box score. So a heartbreaking loss for the Red Sox as they came so close to at least tying the game. But Fisk gets into the game ending double play. Mr. Brody says it's safe to come in now. The game is over. Mr. Brody saw that coming. He didn't want us to be part of that. So we might have to play game two here to see if we can get revenge here. Right, Mr. Brody? <laughs> He's already the co-host there. we got to do another game. Still early yet, so we can do that. So Bergmeier takes the loss. He's one and two. Actually, let's go to the winning pitcher first, as we should. So Darrell Jackson gets the win, three and two. Six and a third innings pitch, eight hits allowed, three runs. All of them were in, three walks and seven strikeouts. Holly and Sutton both with holds. And Mike Marshall comes in and gets his eighth save of the season, pitching two-thirds of an inning, allowing two hits. So he did not have his best stuff, but was able to get the fist to ground into the double play to end the game. Drago, I mean, uh, Bergmeier, four innings pitched, eight hits allowed, five walk runs, all of them earned, two walks and two strikeouts. Drago was excellent out of the bullpen, pitching four innings, allowing just one hit, walking one, that was an intentional walk, and striking out four. So Bergmeier, I mean, uh, Bergmeier, Drago, excellent out of the pen, lowers his ERA to now 2.41, so he's by far our best um, reliever in the pen so far this year, as Stanley has, as Al would put it, pooped the bed so far. And Bergmeier has not been great either. So Bergmeier's ERA now goes up to 5.92. So that start does not help him. So for the Minnesota Twins, Willie Norwood, one for four with a run scored. Bombo Rivera, one for four with two runs scored in an RBI. Dan Ford, the center fielder, one for four with an RBI. Jose Morales, the DH, 2 for 4 with an RBI. Cusack, 1 for 0 for 3 with a run scored. Roy Smalley, 2 for 3. Larry Wolf, 1 for 4 with a run scored in an RBI. Bob Randall, two, 1 for 4 with an RBI. And there were no home runs hit today. So for the Red Sox, Jerry Remy was 2 for 5 with a run scored. Jim Rice, 2 for 5 with a run scored. Yastrzemski had a good day, three for five with a couple runs batted in. Scott was one for three with a run scored. He also made a great stop to start a double play in the ninth. Uh, Sam Bowen came on the pinch run, scored a run. Butch Hobson, one for five. Dwight Evans, two for four with a, two runs batted in. 
Montgomery one for three. Also walked. Hancock came in as a pinch runner. Did not get in at bat. Kendall came in as a defensive replacement. Did not get an official at bat as Carlton Fisk pinch hit for him and hit promptly hit into a double play to end the game. And Frank Duffy one for three. So player of the game. Very tough decision. And nothing, nothing really outstanding here, but I think we're going to give it to the pitcher, Daryl Jackson. Six and a third innings, eight, even though he did allow eight hits, three runs, kept the Twins in the game. I mean, uh, kept the lead. I mean, if the Red Sox would have won, I probably would have given it to Dick Drago as he pitched four fine innings out of the pen. Drago, definitely the best pitcher today. But we'll give Jackson the player of the game. I don't know. I don't think so. I can't. I'm going to still give it to Dick Drago, even in a losing effort. You can do that. I've seen the Super Bowl teams give the MVPs to, I know for the Dallas Cowboys, some they um, a couple of their defensive guys won the MVP award despite losing the Super Bowl. So I'm going to give it to Dick Drago. One hit in four innings of work. And again, that's an intentional walk, so don't really count that. You know, statistically it counts. But So thank you for joining us. And Eric from High Ground Gaming, my co-hostess, Miss Mags, and now Mr. Brody. So we're probably going to come back and do the second game of the doubleheader. So take care and God bless. Bye-bye now.